Alright, guys, today we're going to start doing uh, hydraulic brake bleeding, and I've talked about this before, about stripped bolts. Uh, now, the heads of these bolts actually look fine. They're not stripped yet. As I put my screwdriver in here, they are wanting to strip. The other thing that we know is happening is that the tip of this is a little bit too large. I'd rather take one of my cheap screwdrivers, grind that tip down so that I can get a really good bite on there. Otherwise, you're definitely going to round these out. Can you see if you can get the video in here and actually see? When I really put some force on here, I don't know if you can see that in the video. I'm actually getting the head of the bolt to turn, but I can tell that the threads are not. It's, it's, there's a really good chance that this, this is going to break and strip off here. So instead of just continuing to force that around, I want a hammering action. And I might get some fluid that will leak out of here. So we said one thing we do is we take soapy water, shake it up good, and we're just going to saturate this entire area uh, like crazy. If you have any paint or body work, notice we want to get the fender really good. And I'm going to ask that uh, you guys do me a favor and do the other side of the bike. <coughs> Go ahead and spray the gauges down all the way down along the wheel and everything else. That would be great. Uh, the DOT 3 and 4 brake fluid will eat paint, so we need to be really careful with that. I've got a couple different bits here. <clears throat> I'll find the appropriate size one. Real common for a number two. But instead of just going ahead and installing, is the seat the best place to store tools or uh, parts or anything? It sure isn't, is it? <laughs> instead of just installing my, <clears throat> my impact driver, what I want to do is make sure and wedge this in here. Okay. Now, one thing you got to think about is I'm banging on this. These handlebars uh, could potentially be rubber dampened in here, and I might not be actually getting a good bite. So whether you support that or whatever you do, I want to make sure that I get down in there tight. Now, I always attempt, you guys have seen this. I'm going to preload this. I'm going to see if I can do this by hand. It feels like it's going to break. So I'm going to go back to the driver itself. This one is this one is very very close to breaking. Actually, even from impacting that, you can see here where it started to roll up and out of there. It, it's going to break. I'm going to try and switch sides now since I'm going to do the other one for break something here. I have to remember to do that. I think a lot of people skip that step. They sure do. Now let's see if we could get luckier on this one. Okay, that one worked. If you do not get that bit down in there good, uh, it is going to break. <clears throat> Give me the, some uh, lube right there, please. As soon as I can get exposed threads, I also want to lube that. Now I'm just going to go back and forth with that. Hopefully that will run down along those threads, and I'm just going to let it sit. So I'm going to move back to this one. I probably am not doing any good right now because I'm not under the head of this. But since I definitely feel like the bit is wanting to, uh, <coughs> to uh, jump out of the screw, I'm going to go back to trying to do this by hand. Now, what also I'm going to do, I'm going to switch back to a screwdriver. I don't like the fit of this. This fit is not good. My impact feels good, but what I want to be able to do is go back and forth right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to bear with me for a second, and I'm going to use this bit out of the kit, and I'm going to go to... so that I could get some back and forth here. Because what I'm trying to do is just break those threads up here. Can the, is the camera able to is the camera able to get in here and see this? Can you get in on there? I think I'm I'm having success here. Oh look at that. Now think about this. I'm actually reversing, tightening and reversing rather than just doing it. And I was able, I was successful in getting it out. Makes sense? Nothing's broke. Nothing's stripped. You can take a look. Now this bolt is either broke or it's bent. Can you actually see how the head is wobbling on that? I definitely thought that was broke. I'm going to need to replace that. You can actually, you guys see how the head's, did you see how it was just ready to break? How fun do you think it is to try and get extracted bolts off a master cylinder? Now it's easy because I could tap this 
uh, I could chase the threads on this, it's going to be fine. I could get a new bolt and life is good and it's no big deal. Had I broke that, it was going to be a bad day. What we'll do is we'll uh, actually pass this around. You guys can take a look at that. And uh, what we got. That is how you get this apart. You guys have a lot more challenges in dealing with motorcycles um, that are, you know, 20 and 30 years old where this takes extreme caution. If you just get in here and rough this up, you guys understand that you're just going to end up causing a lot of problems. And just going out and buying a master cylinder isn't so easy because, <coughs> Terry, you just ran into that switching off different bikes. The master cylinder you go with has to be so dependent on the handlebar angle. Now think about this. If I switch this to a set of drag bars that are straight, this master cylinder is going to sit like this, isn't it? Okay. So, I mean, we have to be able to, in the operation down the road, typically the top of the master cylinder will actually be uh, pretty close to being flat. And uh, now you can take a look at this here. I think what we'll do is we'll just uh, stop this video. That was a good example of how to actually remove master cylinder bolts without breaking them and without stripping them.